Hey folks, welcome to Weekend Wrap. Jonah Friedman here with Armchair Analyst Matt Doyle, and we're going to break down a pretty busy weekend. Only one MLS game, but a ton of international action, and we will start with that one MLS game. Lots of significance with the standings, and that is the Seattle Sounders getting a big win over Chivas USA. Yeah, the Sounders clearly second place now in the West, and they needed to get the full three points if they wanted to keep their uh, supporter shield hopes alive. They did that. It took a little bit of doing, though. Nick LeBrock gave Chivas an early lead. The Sounders really looked sluggish, and then Eddie Johnson pulled one back on a beautiful cross from Christian Tiffer. Of course, another headed goal for Eddie. And the second half, it was all Seattle. The Sounders really showed that they're a team to be reckoned with. They pulled it out. Uh, the cross from Freddie Montero, for me, the cross of the year. I don't think you'll see a better one. Full sprint, left foot, just on a dime to EJ's head, and he made no mistake past Dan Kennedy. For Chivas, it was definitely a better showing than they've had the past couple of weeks, but they, their season's over now. It's just about winning jobs for next year and showing that they could be a part of something going forward. And number two on our list, the Canadians needed a win at BMO against Panama. And how does this sound? The Canadians in the hexagonal. Sound good? It hasn't happened yet, but they are very, very close. They've got seven points now halfway through this round of qualifying, and they could get there, but they're going to need to get at least four points from these last three games. The good news is they hadn't really shown any offensive power yet in this round, and they finally got a goal uh, with about 15 minutes left to go. Atiba Hutchinson taking a quick restart on a free kick, and Dwayne Rosario unmarked in front, putting the goal in, putting the ball in. But you know what? They'll take it. It's a goal. The defense has been really good for this Canadian team through these matches. They have not allowed a goal now in five straight games. That dates back to a friendly in February. But now the going gets tough. They've got to go down to Panama, uh, which is not going to be easy for them. Then they've got a home game against Cuba, and then they close it out against Honduras. So we're thinking four points from these last three games, and they could make it to the Hex. Number one, it was not a good night at the office for the U.S. national team going down to Jamaica, looking for a result, and coming out of there with a loss. It all started so well. <laughs> uh, 35 seconds for Clint Dempsey to put home a Hercules Gomez rebound. Uh, it was actually a nice build-up to a couple of good passes from Kyle Beckerman, Moadu, and that was the sum total of their positive contributions for the night. As soon as the U.S. got that goal, they just laid back and went into a defensive shell, clearly terrified about the Jamaican speed. Whenever the turnovers happened, the U.S. had to foul, and of course, those fouls got punished with two free kicks from outside the box. Just want to point out for Tim Howard, this is three goals he's given up in the last two qualifying games, all three on free kicks from outside the box. He has to do better. I, I know uh, there's a lot of blame to go around, and you don't want to throw your, your starting keeper under the bus, but this is a pattern for him. He gave up a ton of goals from outside the box in the last World Cup, gave up the goal against Israel Castro in World Cup qualifying from outside the box. He has a habit of this and he has to do better. But the U.S. as a whole, really, it comes down to that midfield play. Jurgen Klinsmann always has three or four defensive midfielders out there and there's no point to it because whenever these guys try to go forward, they lose the ball. If Klinsmann keeps shoehorning Jermaine Jones into that number eight role, if he asks Maurice Edu to play wide, if he asks Clint Dempsey to play as a number 10, the U.S. is not going to qualify for the hexagonal. That's a very, very realistic po possibility and Tuesday night is no question about it, a must win. Let's quick look at the top performers of the MLS week that was uh, Eddie Johnson, as we said, getting goals number 12 and 13. He's now fourth in the Golden Boot race, and he's now just set a Sounders uh, franchise record for goals scored. Tally Hall coming up huge in a win for Houston, 1-0 win over RSL, three big saves down the stretch to preserve that clean sheet. And Tony Cassio, the rookie, with arguably his best showing in a few months with a goal and assist against Portland. Go Huskies. Yeah. Tony Cassio is a, obviously, a, he's my alma mater, so I have a lot of he's love for the guy. Here. He's one of those rookies who who's almost made a bunch of great plays this year, and suddenly it clicked, and he had a goal and assist. He hit the post within a minute. He looked like a real force out there. He's someone that the, the Rapids will build around. Uh, for Tally Hall, if he could distribute at all, he would be the number two in the national team uh, keeper pool. I, I think he's that good. But he's he just got to work on his footwork, but man, keeping teams off the board, you can't beat them. Uh, as for EJ, I'm still eating crow. Okay, this is for <laughs> Jeremiah Oshan, our Sounders beat writer. I'm sorry, you were right. EJ has been awesome. Anytime he gets a look with his head in the box, it's in the net. And he also did some great build-up work to set up uh, Brad Evans for a real sitter that he should have he buried. Uh, just a great performance from him. Quick honorable mentions, Dimitri Mbongo getting a goal and creating an own goal basically for New England in that win over Columbus. Nick Romano in a losing cause, still playing very well for Real Salt Lake, and though he was at fault for that late goal, really playing well. And Drew Moore, let's not forget the Rapids captain, uh, creating two assists for the team in that big win. A real clinic and overlapping from the right back position. Uh, a great decoy run on the second goal and of course inch perfect cross on the first. 
Let's take a look at the standings in the third round of CONCACAF qualifying for the 2014 World Cup. Jamaica on top of Group A with seven points after that win over the U.S. The U.S. and Guatemala are tied on four points, and that's bad news because they're also tied on goal differential and goal scored. So it's going to be a tough one for the U.S. to make sure they get that second spot. Over in Group B, Mexico undefeated after a 2-0 win at Costa Rica. Tough place to play. They've got nine points. The Tico is in second place with four points. And in Group C, as we said, Canada in pole position with seven points, uh, Panama in second with six points, and Honduras with four points after a win over Cuba in which three MLS players scored. That'll do it for us. It's a huge week for the U.S. and Canadian national teams. Make sure you check back at the end of the week. We'll see you then.